Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And if you haven't been doing your preps, or if you haven't been gathering your goods, as you're going to see in this video that we're going to talk about in depth on some of the things that you need to make sure that you have on hand, I beg you folks, please do this now while you still have time. I want to make sure that people understand when I'm talking about what is going on in this country. And when I am doing these videos, that this video here is something that you can fall back on to give you the ideas of what you may want to have on hand. You see, everything that is going on in this world as we are talking right now affects everyone in this world. Every single human being will be affected by the outcome of what takes place here. See, what is taking place in Ukraine is a devastating tragedy at this point in time. You have the Russian forces that are moving in from all different sides. They're surrounding all the major cities and towns. They're meeting a lot of great resistance. Now, I know a lot of you people out there maybe are in denial. You don't believe that this is going to affect anybody. It's not going to affect you. It's not going to affect your family. And maybe that is so. And if that's the case, then if you wish, you could just turn off this video right now. But if you really want to learn and understand how to be prepared and see some of the things that you're going to need in case of whatever may take place, if you want to be able to supply for your family, if you want to be able to take care of your family, you may want to stick around and watch this video. Everybody needs to listen to what I have to say. This is probably one of the most important videos that I have done to give you information on what is taking place. First off is you just don't want to panic. Don't panic, folks. That is the worst possible thing that you could do as a prepper or beginning prepping or just in general. Panic can really hurt the way that you go about and the way that you think about things and your decision making. What is the best thing that you can do? Well, the best thing to do is be prepared. It's better to be prepared than unprepared at this point in time in the game that we're playing planned. Now, Putin has come out and he has threatened the Western countries if they do intervene in any way, shape, or form that consequences will be unlike anything ever seen before, quote, unquote. So, your water preparations is probably going to be the biggest thing that you're going to really run across that you're going to really need to pay attention to. You can sit there and you can get the water purification tablets, folks. That is a great little tool to have in your toolbox. And this way here, it's very easy for you to purify your water after you have filtered it in some way, shape, or form. You can also use bleach and follow this basic little steps to add the bleach to your water. Now, a lot of people are like, wow, I thought bleach would, you know, kill you if you drunk it. Yes, but if you use it properly, when you're putting it into your water, it actually sanitizes your water and kills bacteria. You can get Sawyer Minis. Sawyer Minis are a great tool. They are a small but very efficient and they'll filter out over a hundred thousand gallons of water. You can also sit there and you can look at life straws. Life straws are another great addition to your arsenal. Another great thing is a Berkeley water filter. Berkeley water filters are one of the top of the line water filtration systems that you can buy. That is in a sense portable. It is a very large but 
You also can get them in all different sizes. So, depending on what kind of counter space you may have or what your needs may be or how much you can spend, being able to buy a Berkeley water filter system, different sizes and different price range could be an option for you. Storing water is another really, really hard one here, folks. When you're storing your water and everything, you can get like water bricks, you can get water jugs, you can store it in gallon uh, water, you can store it in soda bottles, you can store it any way you wish. It's, it's really great. You can buy cases of water, and this way here you can stack those up. I wouldn't go much more than three or four high because then it starts to collapse the ones on the bottom, but that also is an alternative for you. Oil prices are just starting to skyrocket again. The last time that I checked before this video, they were pushing $97 a barrel. So oil prices are going up, which means gas prices are also going up. Gas prices just keep going up regardless, all right? All the top analysts and everything else and AAA and all them are saying throughout the country, people could be paying this summer in the neighborhood between 4 and $7 per gallon of gas depending on where you do live. So having extra gas cans, plastic gas cans, metal gas cans, and all those different types of things would be a very, very good thing to have on hand to have extra gas in case of some type of a cyber attack that shuts down our whole grid, our systems, our critical infrastructure and everything else. This way here, you have some backup gas that you can use in your vehicles or in some other things that we're gonna be talking about here shortly. But the point is you have extra. So if you had an emergency, you had to leave or you needed to get to a say hospital, a doctor or whatever it may be, you have the gas you could put into your car to hopefully get you to and from those visits. Now, some of the things that you may also want to really consider here, folks, is ways to cook. Charcoal grill is a great option. You want to make sure if you have a charcoal grill, you just, it's just very easy. It, you know, you can get small ones, you can get large ones. A flat top grill is another great thing that you could have in your arsenal. A regular grill would also work. A lot of people may have all these things. You may already have things that you can use in emergency situations. Having Coleman stoves is another great option because Coleman stoves are nice and easy, compact. You can take them anywhere and you can cook as long as you have propane, right? So things to go along with this type of cooking and everything is you want to make sure that you have charcoal. So you can use the charcoal in your charcoal grill and this way here, boom, you can cook food and Make sure that your family has something to eat. You also want to make sure that you do have propane. Now, if you do have a gas grill, a propane um, flat top, your Coleman stoves, you can get those small gas cylinders, one pounder, and you can get the 20 pound tanks. You can even buy a 30 or a 50 pound tank. Just remember, they get heavy to move around. So if you are older or you have problems lifting things, you may want to stay with the standard 20 pound tank. Having a few of those on hand may be very, very beneficial. The small little one pound tanks are great for your Coleman stove to take along in an emergency or just on a fun camping trip. But the point is, you have a way to cook either way, either in your home or out of your home, and you still can cook bull water, make food, cook dinner, cook breakfast, whatever, you can still do it. Using your 20 pound tank, you can buy an extender and you can buy an adapter and you can hook your 20 pound tank up to your Coleman stove. So that's just another option for you. Now we're moving on down the line, folks, and you got to have power. So having battery banks in all different sizes is crucial. You can have the small little battery banks to charge like small items, your cell phones and 
uh, flashlights and things of that nature. You also want to maybe look into getting a generator, a portable generator on wheels so it's easier for you to, to move around and everything else because you don't want to be carrying it because those generators get very heavy and the bigger the generator, the heavier it is. Maybe you want to look into something for your home. Maybe you want a whole home system. Maybe you want to get something like a Generac and have that put in so that it'll run your whole house and it kicks on when the power goes out. So if we did have a cyber attack and got, you know, the grid went down and everything else, well, the Generac generator would kick on and run your whole home. Something you really want to really consider, folks, is making sure that you have extra cash on hand also. All right, take out some cash out of the bank, small bills. I would start with one, five, tens, and twenties. Nothing bigger than a $20 bill because if the power is out and nobody can make change, but they may still be open, you will be able to get in there and you can buy food or supplies if you have cash. So having cash, however much you can afford to keep on hand in your home in small denominations is going to be a very big bonus. Now we have to really think about what is supposedly going to be taking place also coming up here shortly. And that is the march to DC, the, the convoy of trucks that are supposed to be going to DC you know, the, the Freedom Convoy there. We don't know how many are actually going to show up. We don't know how this is going to affect us down the road, folks. We don't know what that future holds and how long this could go on. So it's another reason why you may want to be planning ahead. Because you really just don't want to be in those long lines again of food banks and stuff of not having any preparations and not being prepared in any way, shape, or form. It's just not a good scenario to be back to what happened in March of 2020. You start off with all your basic goods. You want to make sure that you have your medicines. Any type of medicines that you do take, if it could be vitamins or everyday medicines, a lot of people are on a lot of different, could be blood pressure. It could be, you know, stuff to regulate your heartbeat. It could be a lot of different things, but you want to make sure that you're staying on top of those, but always make sure that you're staying on top of your prescriptions and making sure that you have plenty. Having all the different types of toiletries and first aid stuff and all that kind of stuff and yes toilet paper and all that is a very critical part of your prepping you want to make sure that you know hey i got to make sure that i have some of these things and what do i have to do and how can i store these where can i store them and that all has to play into your preps you all have to remember you have to like think outside the box when it comes to your prepping now we're going to start off on a lot of food products that you may want to make sure that you have. When it comes down to a grid down type situation, all you need is hot water or you can go another route, which is MREs. But you can start off with your freeze dried foods, Augustine Farms. You could look into them. Uh, Mountain House has a whole bunch of like the perfect size single packs and stuff. And you can store those very easy. I've done videos on those. You can find a lot of this stuff. It is really really inexpensive and when you get down to the single packs if you shop between amazon and walmart sometimes they have them on sale and you can get really good deals on them you can also go the uh, mre route if you wish and you can get some of these mres and they already have a heat pack and everything in it you don't even need hot water and they will heat up the food and everything else you're good to go now, some of the canned goods and stuff that you really want to think about because you want to try to have things that, well, you can open and eat. 
That is a very important thing. So you want them to have stuff like the pulled pork and roast beef and chicken and tuna fish and all those different types of things. Corned beef hash, beefaroni, um, spaghettios, all these different types of canned goods and stuff are great to have. The DAC hams, spam, a lot of these products you can just take and open and eat if you had to in a very critical emergency situation. Having a stockpile of food and canned goods and things are something that you really want to consider. There are several different ways that you can do this. There are several different ways of making sure that you can have room to do this. If you have a spare room, you can put a rack up and put your all your canned goods and stuff in, in there. You can stack it all in a rack and so you can rotate it and use it and everything else. Racks, depending on the racks you want to buy, can be relatively cheap and they can also cost you a lot of money. But the point being here, folks, is, you know, you have to make sure that you're, you're buying the goods and everything else that your family would probably eat regardless. You don't ever want to stop learning. Never stop learning, folks. We all learn something new every day, okay? Not one of us knows everything and we don't know all the answers and everything else. If we did, well, things wouldn't be the same as they are right now. And what's really taking place that you people really have to pay attention to is some of the prices in the stores. A lot of prices are going up and meat prices are going up. Everyday things are going up and it is just a scary type situation of what is taking place. Folks, the, the main thing that you want to remember is that with all these prices increasing, they're going to keep increasing because of, of inflation. They're going to keep going up just like gas prices are. Because the higher the gas prices go, the more it's going to cost to move the products to the stores. You want to make sure that you're storing your dry goods. What you want to be looking at is, number one, storing rice. It's still probably one of the cheapest things that you can buy that's going to last the longest. Having rice on hand is a very, very good thing. It's a very critical to your survival. Pastas is another one. Having pasta on hand is a huge, huge benefit. If you have rice and you have pasta, you have two products that are going to probably last for between 20 and 40 years, depending on how you store these things, which is amazing, really, if you think about it. Having sugar on hand is another thing. Having sugar is a great thing because you can sweeten things up or whatever. If you are, say, storing powdered milk, if you store powdered milk and stuff, you can always take a little sugar when you make it and you put it into the powdered milk and it helps take that taste away. It makes it a little sweeter and it's not so harsh compared to drinking regular milk. Having bouillon cubes is another thing. A bouillon cube is a great to have because for one, they last for a long time. They don't take up a lot of room and they're great for flavoring a lot of dishes. So having those on hand is a lot better than storing lots of cans of say chicken broth and beef broth and bone broth or containers because those all take up a lot of room. And your bouillon cubes, you can get those in a lot of different flavors, folks. So those are very, very important. You also want to make sure that you are storing salt. Salt is another big thing that you want to make sure that you have on hand, not just for flavoring food, but salt. You can cure things. You can clean with salt. There's a lot of things that salt does, and they have a lot of benefits. So having a lot of salt on hands and having a lot of different types of salt on hand would be very beneficial. Besides your iodized salt, besides your regular salt, besides your canning salt, you can have sea salt, you can Himalayan salt, 
It's all going to last for a very long time if you store it properly. Having dried beans, all different types of dried beans and stuff is another thing that's going to last. If you store it right, folks, they can last between 20 and 40 years. It's just what is taking place right now is what you need to be prepared for. Having coffee, freeze-dried coffee. If you store freeze-dried coffee, folks, and you store it right, it'll last forever. Yes, it could be instant, but it's coffee. And if it's freeze-dried and you store it right, you'll have coffee for a very long time. So if you're an avid coffee drinker, that is a bonus. Having potato flakes, instant potato or potato flakes, however you want to buy them and everything else, and you store those things up, you know, you have potatoes on hand whenever. See, a lot of things people just don't think about. A lot of people just don't understand and a lot of people deny what is taking place and why they need to be ready. They don't think that they need to be. Honey is another good one. Between honey and, say, pure maple syrup, those two products will last forever also. So in this video, I just want people to really think about what took place back when the whole Charlie Victor 19 thing happened and all the panic buying that was taking place. People were just in there, they were going crazy. I mean, and the biggest thing was the toilet paper. And that doesn't need to be. There are different things that you can buy. You can buy wipes besides having toilet paper. You can have wipes, baby wipes, you can store all these things, but the panic buying, folks, is what you want to stay away from. You don't want to get caught up in the whole chaos of the situation. You want to follow all these steps that I've gone through in this long video, which I apologize for, but these things needed to be said. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I would like to thank all of you for joining me on this video today. And I hope this video helps a lot of people out that have a lot of questions on what to do, how to do it, and things to buy. A lot of these things that I've talked about are on my Amazon storefront, which is linked below in the description. A lot of things that you may want to really consider purchasing or on my Amazon storefront. You see, folks, when it comes down to being prepped and when it comes down to being ready, you don't want to wait to the last moment because then you're in that panic buy mode with a million other people. If you are prepared, you can sit back and watch the show. Follow what I'm saying? So, in closing, I'd like to thank you all for everything that you do for my channel. I'd like to thank everybody for sharing these videos, liking these videos. And until next time, folks, I hope everybody stays safe. May God be with Ukraine and those people. And I'll catch all of you on the flip side.